Let's just recap in terms of how the markets are, are, are really repricing at the moment when it comes to Fed expectations, BOE expectations, ECB expectations and beyond. At the moment, we're looking at, for the Fed, about a two-thirds chance or 67% possibility uh, the Fed hikes by 50 basis points. The BOE is sitting still at virtually zero for 50 basis points and almost 100% almost probability that the ECB will go 50 as well. Do you think that investors at this point have adequately kind of internalised that assumption and is that being reflected in the FX space? Look, I think it's really interesting that, you know, as you mentioned, the BOE, the ECB, the Fed, in the last four to six weeks, they have all repriced their terminal rates significantly higher. Front-end yields have shot up for all of these, um, you know, cur currencies. But have we seen that equivalent effect into the euro, the sterling? No, I think the market is completely just focusing on the U.S. data, the U.S. Uh, dollar. And, you know, we've seen, I think, just a one-sided sort of a, that last year's dollar signs of that dollar dominant story uh, peeping up again. But one thing to say, you know, yes, the dollar has rallied over the last uh, four or five weeks, but the rally has been somewhat capped. Um, and that's really, again, because I think the repricing has been across major central banks, not just the Fed itself. Where do you see the biggest fallout in terms of dollar pairs at the moment? There seems there's quite a lot of downside that we've already seen uh, being put into the, the Aussie dollar trade. Is there further to go? Look, I think with the Aussie dollar, obviously, there's a little bit of divergence. The market's now expecting, you know, saw a, a little bit of a da dovish uh, commentary from Governor Lowe this week. And as a result, you know, uh, interest rate um, or terminal rate expectations have uh, declined slightly for Australia, which has now obviously reflected in the Aussie dollar. Um, I think next week we are getting our employment data. I think that is very important and that will sort of paved the way for future moves from the RBA. Um, we have seen two consecutive months of slower employment growth. We find this a little bit startling. It could be seasonal effects because, you know, we have, you know, demand is still holding up pretty strong over here. Um, we also have a lot of migration uh, coming into Australia. And so we think that employment growth should actually be significantly stronger than has been reflected over the last two months. Majorbin, we have seen inflation numbers starting to ease across Asia in the past week. We're talking about Thailand, the Philippines reporting slower than expected price gains. Not to mention, we already had, of course, a BOK pausing rates. Uh, inflation there also has started to ease. If we're starting to figure out this perhaps peak for Asia rates, who are the most vulnerable when you're repricing Fed rates higher? Look, that's a great question. I think that's something we have to start thinking about and factoring in. If we do get a six or a six and a half with the Fed, I think EM, um, you know, economies will be largely affected. But not forgetting that, you know, this currency um, situation or this central banking cycle is very different to previous cycles. In this cycle, the especially the EM currency uh, economies, they started raising well ahead of um, the, the Fed and the rest. And so they had a head start in terms of preserving uh, a little bit of that potential depreciation the currencies would have seen if they had waited a little bit longer. And that has helped them so th throughout this cycle. Further to that, I think um, similarly, these uh, you know many of these currencies based on previous experience have now loaded on a lot of FX foreign uh, reserves. And I think that will keep them a little bit shielded even now if even we do see a repricing higher. Um, but of course, there will be a little bit of pain ahead for these uh, economies. Uh, Marjorie, and before we let you go, of course, we have to ask about the BOJ. Uh, we continue to see this bet that perhaps we could see a surprise coming from the BOJ governor, Haruhiko Kuroda, in his last meeting. Of course, we have seen that dysfunction in the markets. What will you be watching? Look, I think, um, you know, Kuroda's son is known for surprises as he did in December and previously as well. Uh, but realistically speaking, don't think he's going to um, shift the needle uh, this week uh, on policy. He has already sort of set the stage for 
uh, the new governor to come in by shifting a little bit in December. Uh, we do think that there will be an adjustment to the YCC in the second half of the year, but we think gov the new governor needs to come in and sort of uh, agree to the, on the new policy framework, which I think there might be some revisions to how they look at inflation going forward and so on and so forth before, um, you know, making any changes. Overall, I think these changes in the YCC are pretty much due because inflation uh, in Japan is picking up particularly in the wages side of things. I mean, average monthly earnings, cash earnings, you know, rose from 1% to 4%, which is pretty significant.